Governor. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, hey Susan. Morning, Thanks for coming on short notice. You know, I was hoping today that I was going to have an opportunity to have some uh, one-on-ones with a lot of you, uh, hoping that we we're going to have some clarity coming out of the elections, both here in Connecticut and, um, and nationally. Uh, obviously, we have the opposite of clarity when it comes to uh, what's happening in Washington, D.C. right now. It's confusion. So I still look forward to an opportunity to sitting down and talking more thoughtfully about, uh, once we have clarity out of Washington, what we're doing in the state going forward and what our plan is for the next year. Uh, I will tell you that um, we do have clarity here in terms of Connecticut. I think that um, the vote yesterday happened peacefully. No intimidation, no questions, no people not refusing to wear the mask. People voted. They voted in extraordinarily great numbers, for which I'm thankful. They voted safely. Uh, they voted with a mask. They voted uh, by absentee ballot when they didn't think they could um, uh, go safely themselves in person. I think it was um, a pretty strong mandate uh, for the Democrats, building on what you saw in 2018, both in the State House and in the State Senate. Uh, I'm not an expert on what that means, but I would presume it had a little bit of something to do with um, uh, the presidential election. I think it maybe has something to do with um, how the state has uh, gone about its business over the last year and a half as it came to um, getting our fiscal house in order, getting our economy moving again. And then we were hit by COVID, what it meant in terms of how we tried to manage through that. We've done that together. Uh, I'm really, I see the divisions around the country. I didn't see that here in Connecticut. You know, we worked together as one when it came to the COVID crisis, and I think uh, that had some meaning. I also think the, um, the election yesterday here in the state of Connecticut, um, people are going to say, oh my gosh, a lot of Democrats and super majorities. And uh, I just want people that are looking for solutions. And uh, I'll say the same thing uh, today that I said um, a year and a half ago, um, or two years ago when Susan and I were first uh, elected. That is, um, um, I don't have all the ideas. Uh, I put my best ideas on the table. You know what they are. I presented a budget. I presented a, um, you know, COVID strategy. I did my EOs. And um, if you got a better idea, um, come. You got a place at the table, and I'm, I'm all ears. But I think um, the Democrats uh, did come up with solutions, and for that I appreciate. We had good discussions about that, and I hope uh, the Republicans uh, do come forward with uh, solutions of their own, where the numbers add up, and uh, you'll have somebody that's willing to uh, listen. I think um, nationally, uh, that was a bit of a disappointment. Um, you know, not just because I'm a uh, Joe Biden guy, but I really was looking for clarity. Uh, the last thing I thought this country needed was um, uh, the confusion that you see with an absolutely deadlocked 50-50 uh, race. And uh, the only advice I have is um, give it a couple of days. Uh, we're going we're gonna to work through this. Uh, our, our country did the right thing by uh, having these absentee ballots, just like we did here in the state of Connecticut. Our country did the right thing by, in the middle of this pandemic, not forcing older people or those with uh, pre-existing conditions or those most at risk or those feeling like they were most at risk, they were still allowed to vote by absentee ballot and uh, give them the right to have their vote counted, give them a couple of extra days to have that vote counted, uh, don't uh, cast the um, shade. Don't, Mr. President, undermine uh, the integrity of our, uh, inst our democracy. This is uh, too important the time. And uh, at that point, we'll be able to get back together. We'll know what our future looks like under a President Trump or a President Biden. We'll be united behind whoever that president is, go forward as uh, one country. And we'll be able to sit down and talk what that means in terms of uh, the state of Connecticut. So with that, um, Susan and I are happy to take any questions. As far as what, what the Democrats expanded their majority here in the state, what does that mean for your agenda? What parts of your agenda do you want to push forward? Do you want a public option? Do you want to legalize marijuana? Um, you know, you might be able to do things that you weren't able to do last year. Look, I'm um, 
I think if we learned one thing with COVID, we know how important it is to have uh, health care broadly available to everybody where nobody is left behind and how dangerous that is if some people feel like they can't have a doc or can't have um, a test or, or, or don't know that they're taken care of if they test positive. I think uh, we've learned that. Um, I think broadly speaking, um, you know what my feeling is on taxes, which is that's why I was a Joe Biden person. I thought the idea of the Connecticut jumping forward, raising taxes on our own, puts our state at a terrible competitive disadvantage right when we have the wind to our back. And um, I hope that um, if there is a President Biden, we're going to see uh, support from the federal government that allows our state to go forward. Uh, if uh, this country goes a different way, we'll see what happens. Yeah, if I've learned something else from uh, this is we're much stronger than we work on a regional basis. You remember uh, going back eight months ago, it didn't work for me to have uh, bars open and Charlie Baker to have them closed and vice versa. My thinking is sort of similar when it comes to marijuana, that uh, I think if we do something, we do it on a regional basis. You're right. New Jersey um, uh, has done this. Massachusetts is already legal. Rhode Island's looking at it. New York is looking at it. So. I'll be talking to my fellow governors about what, if anything, we want to do on a regional basis, and then uh, talking with the legislature as well. What about goals? I mean, where, where, where does this stand? I, I, I know that uh, we're still ready for that uh, Senate vote. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, look, I, I came up with my best solution for uh, what I thought was a transportation crisis. I think uh, COVID is only... Um, exacerbated that. You know that our gas tax revenues went down. We've been draining um, the transportation fund. Um, that said, we did get a lot of uh, CARES Act transportation money. We were able to do a lot of state of good repair work. And uh, we will be obscene. Let's, let's ask the legislature. You heard my best ideas. Um, I haven't heard your best ideas, except for something about taking money from the rainy day fund. So we'll be listening. No, I'm, I'm looking at other alternatives. I'm going to put those on the table and I'm going to ask the legislature to make a decision. What was a disaster is they couldn't decide on anything. They couldn't even take a vote. And the Republicans couldn't even take a vote on their own proposals. And Paz, could I just, could I just add? that when this national election is over, and I think the governor and I um, feel pretty confident that Joe Biden will be the winner, um, and we will be able then to use federal resources to support infrastructure projects, just as what happened um, in the Recovery Act after President Obama was elected. So uh, no matter what happens, and again, the governor and I are pretty confident it's going to be uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that we will have federal dollars to invest in infrastructure projects what, in our so state. So, Governor, you're not What's giving up on goals, correct? I mean, it's something, that you, uh, it's something that you put so much capital into, uh, and now you have new people and you got to recalculate these votes, and uh, allegedly we were told by... What I haven't given up on is the fact that uh, we have a, uh, a transportation fund that's slowly going bankrupt. The fact that, uh, you know, California and others are calling for 100% electric cars over the next uh, 10, 15 years. We know we're going to have to change the way we fund transportation. And I'm going to sit down with the legislature. Look, let's face it, my solution wasn't very popular, Republicans or Democrats, but uh, nor did they have a solution of their own. Uh, Connecticut, A, we're strong supporters of the exchange. We can do something here on a state level to maintain that. And B, I'm looking at all solutions I can to make health care more affordable, broadly speaking, to individuals, the self-employed and small business. And if, um, you know, our insurance companies can't come up with a solution, maybe public option will be one of the I ideas on the table. And Christine, we already have the Affordable Care Act 
in our state statutes, the legislature did that two years ago. So all of the protections, the pre-existing conditions, the coverage for young people, they're already in our law. Right, but this stuff could, could go away. I mean, right. those were in our law since you know, 2010. Hey, so. Governor, the, uh, your thoughts on the state Senate possibly being able to override It's okay. We, Look, I'm, I'm, we talk to the state senate all the time. We try and work uh, wherever we can together. Uh, I need them to be able to make some tough choices, just like we as a state have to be able to do that. And uh, look, you have a Democratic caucus, you have a Republican caucus. They don't always speak with just one voice. And we would congratulate, um, we congratulate Rick Lopes and also George Cabrera. And there are a couple of really too close to call races like Melissa Osborne, um, Whitcoast race, so you know we're we're looking Time forward will tell. to seeing what what that number is actually going to be because it looks really good. Sure. Governor, can you give me your thoughts just on when the president tweeted last night that he felt like uh, there were people trying to steal the election? What's your, what was your reaction? I think one of the strengths of America is uh, we've had a strong democracy and people have faith in the integrity of our system, and we don't need the president um, casting doubts upon that. Uh, let the process play out a little bit longer. Let the people with the absentee ballots cast their vote. Governor, with these numbers going up, switching to COVID here, uh, with these numbers going up, I mean, how bad would they have to be? For example, you go into phase two on Friday. How bad would it have to be to maybe go back to phase one? I mean, clearly these numbers, the hospitalizations, are not what you want to see. They're not what they were uh, in the, the good old days two months ago. Yeah, Chris. So Chris is noting correctly that our hospitalization rate went up a lot a couple of days ago. It went down a little bit yesterday. I take uh, no comfort in that except to say that the um, rate of hospitalizations went up a lot faster in April than it's going on in uh, October, November. And uh, what that means is uh, we don't have clarity, but we have a little bit of time to think about how we can make to do everything we can to keep our economy open keep our schools open, and still make sure we have capacity in our hospitals if we're in a pinch. Dr. Murphy said the other day that uh, most of the modeling seems to point to a peak in January or maybe even February. And I believe your executive authority expires now in February. So do you anticipate seeking some form of emergency power to go into the spring? Not yet. Okay. You know, I think... We know that um, prognosticating about COVID is a pretty um, risky business. And uh, so let's see where you are in uh, December, early January. The legislature hopefully will be back in session. We'll have a chance to think about this. Oh, you, you, Go ahead. You, you floated the idea of alternatives to polls on transportation. Can you flesh that out a little bit? No, I'm going to talk to the transportation chairman first on both sides of the aisle. Oh, we'll, we'll share with him. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll share it with him. Uh, Thanks. Hey, how, do you think, how do you think? COVID-19 pandemic affected the election. I mean, clearly there has been opposition to uh, the executive order that you have, you have issued. Uh, I think the latest public polling we've seen still suggests two-thirds of the, the states support what you're doing, but clearly a, a, a third of a significant number of people don't. Do you think that that issue played at all into the election campaign and how so? Uh, I think a little bit. I th think it certainly did nationally, but look nationally. Look at the places that have an infection rate that's uh, five times ours, ten times ours. Look at North Dakota and South Dakota and Kansas, all the places that refuse to uh, have uh, a mandate that says wear the mask. If you can't keep a distance, wear the mask. Those are the places that are most at risk, and I think that's why Connecticut is pretty much unified in terms of we're going to do what it takes to keep our people safe. Will you be proposing any changes to the emergency Um, well, if you're referring to the fact that in February, um, the emergency powers end, which Paz was just asking me about, uh, I think we'll have plenty of time to take a well, look at that in January. The will be in, in session at that point. I'm, just, I'm, I'm asking you, based on your experience, do you think that there are changes needed to be made in those laws? And will you be proposing any such changes? Or will you be open to 
Considering yeah. Changes so, to that law, that's a so the reason we said let's do it in February as opposed to January is we wanted the legislature to be back in order to deliver a basis to have a chance to look at the 70-plus uh, executive orders, think in a thoughtful way based upon where we are in COVID in January, uh, what should continue past February and what shouldn't. So do you feel you have, a, a, in answer to your question before, it, it sounded like you feel you have time, you have wiggle room, in other words, you're, you're, you're saying it's not, uh, we are going back to phase two, but you mentioned the hospitalizations aren't as bad as April. Do you feel you're in somewhat of a holding pattern here? You've got more time to make decisions? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, we're, we're talking about uh, February and the executive orders. I think we have a lot of time to uh, think about that. In terms of, um, you know, phase two and schools and the economy, um, I think we have a little more time than we did in April. I think uh, we're finding that our hospitalizations are not as quick as they were last time around. Comma, I have no idea what next week will bring, Chris. Do you have any concrete proposals that you can share now that you think you want to put forward and are possible given the larger Democratic majority? Um, in terms of, oh, in terms of anything, plans going forward? You know, recreational park, anything? Uh, not today. Um, I was planning to sit down. I was planning to see what um, was going to happen if we had a, a President Biden or a President Trump, see what we might be able to anticipate in terms of supplementals, what that would mean in terms of uh, our budget. As you know, we've got a deficit that's over a billion dollars, so we've got to deal with that on a thoughtful basis. In terms of other initiatives, and you brought up marijuana or gambling, these are ways that we maybe can bring some revenue in or, you know, over a period of years. Uh, they will be on the table. So going back to the hospitalization, real quick on COVID, I know you had said last week or the week before that you felt the casinos were doing a pretty good job. Given what we're seeing now in the state, would you be strongly urging I think I would. Uh, look, look what we're doing with our, um, you know, our restaurants. You know, we're saying that you can stay open, thank goodness, because uh, many places are closing them down and Europe is closing them down. We're trying to keep our restaurants open. We say the safest way to keep them open is that they close at 930. That's the type of thinking I'd love to see um, the casinos uh, con consider as well. Yes. Hey, Governor, at what point did you decide you're going to run for a second term? <laughs> when, when, did, when did that happen? <laughs> um, when we got when COVID we got under control, government? when we got our budget under control, when we know what the future will bring. I've got my plate full right now. So it's a little premature, you're saying? Wildly premature. <laughs> and, and sports betting, is sports betting uh, with, with the numbers going up in the House and Senate, as everyone's been saying, or is, or is sports yeah. betting more contingent on what the tribes say? as opposed to uh, increasing Democratic majorities? Look, sports betting, iGaming, iLottery, um, let's face it, I'm looking around the country, I see this is something that's happening. You know, we've got a, a compact with the tribes, so anything we gotta do, we gotta do in association with them in a way that uh, works for both of us. Yeah, but I also said that um, I happen to be a Joe Biden guy because I think what we do at the state level is much riskier, much riskier when it comes to taxes compared to what the federal government's going to do. You know, the president's been pretty, or uh, Senator, Vice President Biden's been pretty clear about the fact that he would make state and local aid part of his package, which I think will be very helpful for all of our states, all 50 of them, and keep this uh, country from going into a deeper recession. I don't think uh, any other taxes would be necessary at this point if we uh, find we're going to get the state and local aid that we're counting on. He would probably just do it on his own at the federal level should he win the election? Oh, yeah. He's laid out a pretty clear strategy about what um, people earning over $400,000 and what companies would have to do. And he's been very clear that state and local aid would be a big part of that because all 50 states have seen their revenues hit and hit hard by COVID, and none of the CARES Act money did anything to bolster the lack of revenues that were hit. So back to COVID, the Friday rollback, how much time are you going to need to work? What other positions do you plan on taking to conduct the That was related to COVID again, and yeah. what are next? Friday rollback, how much time are you going to take to see the results? No, 
Oh, I see. Um, I think what we're going to do is um, follow the hospitalization. I think, as I've said before, for me, again, that is a key metric. Like it was in April when it came to flattening the curve, we wanted to do everything we could to make sure that our hospitals had the capacity to take care of everybody in need. And I look at that in terms of not just COVID now, but other surgeries as well. So I think that will be the determining factor. I think, um, I think, broadly speaking, uh, people understand what we're doing, why we're doing it. We're doing it cautiously, and nobody wanted to keep our economy open more than I did. And I think most people understand that if we take these, um, these restrictions as part of the phase two, it allows our economy to stay open. Is everybody happy with it? No. Some people would just like to say, let's get back to normal and let their chips fall where they may. But I think the other 90% of Connecticut wants to keep us safe. Governor, I want to follow up on a previous question about tolls. Is now the time to try it now that the stakes are lower, now that we've had this election pass by and we're going to be in an odd year? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, you know, we've got to figure out our transportation system. We've got time to do that, and I'm going to do that with the legislature. I think you're way, way, way ahead of yourself. Um, okay. You know, right now, we're about the only state in the country that ended the last fiscal year with a surplus. We're about the only state in the country I know that had enough money that we could also start paying down our uh, pension obligations in a small way, but a, a real start. I think we've known that the revenue numbers and assumptions have changed quite a bit. You saw they came down by almost uh, you know, 40% just in the last uh, couple of months. And I think we're going to have some clarity from the federal government um, in terms of what they're going to do for state aid, I think, in the next couple of months. Look, I'm not going to raise taxes if I don't have to raise taxes. That's for darn sure. Um, I think we'll have a lot more clarity in the next uh, couple of months. Governor, in terms of voting, would you like to see maybe a constitutional amendment on the ballot next year uh, regarding early voting? I think it makes some sense. Uh, i got to deal with the legislature. Susan was Secretary of State. I'll, I'm going to pass this over to her. But I saw hundreds of thousands of people that said, I like the opportunity not to have to stand in a long line uh, and vote. I think that we, we're showing as a state that we can do it safely. I think we're showing as a state we can do it with integrity. And I hope we learn something from that. But you want to add to that, Susan? Yeah, just, just that um, I think uh, thus far, early voting or mail-in voting is a huge success. More than 30% of our voters uh, Democrat, Republican, unaffiliated, all participated. It uh, seemed to have gone really smoothly. And I think it was a godsend during this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we saw a lot of people show up to the polls uh, because they wanted to vote in person, but literally a third of our voters chose to uh, put it in the white box or mail their ballot. So I think it's very clear the voters of Connecticut would like to see that continued. And I can't wait to work with legislative leaders to continue that beyond this election. That can't go on the ballot until the next statewide election in correct? Um, right, but in the meantime, the legislature could continue to uh, pass laws to make uh, mail-in voting easier, or or enact early but voting. If they, if they do, if they act as expected to uh, essentially ratify that question that they do at that time, it will go on in 2020. Right. 22. 22. Right here, I'm sorry, 22. 22. Yep. Yep. Hey, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you coming on short notice.